Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Desks and Dorks, your favorite board game design and creation podcast. And as always, is shaped by you. I'm Kyle. I'm the dork, and welcome. This is getting the most from low-level PCs, part two. Before you watch this video, however, do all the YouTube stuff that we usually tell you to do. But also, check out our games over at World of Game Design, or if you haven't had a chance to check out this week's low-level monsters workshop or RPGs that you might like that aren't D&D, I would encourage you to check them out. All that stuff is in the description below. But before, but that's pretty much it. Let's just let's get into it. Um, um, so, last week we talked about gear and some tactics. This week we're talking only about spells, baby! Uh, so, a couple ground rules and a few guidelines before I get into this. I'm only going to talk about a couple spells and some ways that you could potentially use them. All super important. But, again, the guidelines. Here we go. One, all spells are first level. And I did not include any obvious ones. Um, and I should say first level or below. They are all first level. Um, but, again, no first level or below. Why? Because stuff like Magic Missile exists. And, of course, the absolute god king of all Dungeons and Dragons, other than just basic rope, Prestidigitation. The greatest spell ever made. Basically, zero level wish. I love Prestidigitation. Did not include it in this list. So... With the guidelines out of the way, only first level, no obvious ones, let's start talking about some of the cool ways that you can use spells in D&D. The first one I want to talk about is, of course, now all of China knows you're here, I want to talk about Alarm. Um, alarm is an incredible spell. So, first things first, you might be thinking to yourself, well, Alarm's a ritual-based spell, which they take a little bit longer to cast, and that's true, but again, when I talk about combat or Dungeons & Dragons in general, I'm always a big fan of making D&D more like solving a puzzle, and something you can use for Alarm is defense, right? We talk about that plenty of times if you are... Um, camping or if you're you know basically taking a long rest you can use alarm on an area in order to protect that area um or at least so that way you know you know when your enemies are coming but i think alarm is actually amazing for scouting uh, what's interesting about alarm is that you can place it on a 30 foot area and then eventually you will be able to have that alarm go off this means that you can do it to set up ambushes so for example if you are hiding multiple feet from away from where the alarm is actually set or if it's nighttime uh, a group of enemies can pass through, the alarm will trigger, you will know when to drop your AoE spells or when to, you know, potentially use ranged attacks against that area. I say it's actually amazing for scouting because you can throw up an alarm while you're out in the frontier looking for more stuff, and the, if the alarm goes off, you'll know that somebody has come around you or that there is a way to get into or out of an area that maybe you don't necessarily know about. Uh, but the thing that I think doesn't get talked about enough with alarm, its duration is insane the spell lasts for eight hours my brothers in christ eight hours this spell lasts there is no reason you shouldn't be using alarm maybe a little bit more often than you normally would all right let's talk about find familiar um and of course i have to choose my favorite familiar the frog because he wants soup um, so you're gonna need to get a little bit sneaky for this one, but for example, when you have access to find familiar, you can communicate with your familiar telepathically. So if you want to, you could, um, have that familiar actually sneak into an area, communicate with it that way. I also think that they're amazing for scouting. Depending on the familiar that you get, a rat, for example, is a great scouting familiar when you are in an urban environment or trying to slip into or out of the cracks of buildings that you don't necessarily know where everything is at. Uh, but again, bats, for example, are fantastic at nighttime reconnaissance. Hawks, eagles, owls, something like that allows you to scout in the air effectively at lower levels where there's not a lot of monsters that have air-based attacks or range attacks that could do or you know uh, present any real danger to your familiar. And let's also think about this too. And the reason I said you're going to need to get a little bit sneaky for this one. One of my favorite things to do is to have your familiar with someone who is very good at sleight of hand, a rogue, a ranger, something along those lines. If they can slip uh, your familiar, my trusted soup time frog, into the pocket of an enemy, later on you can use a spell with that familiar. So there's nothing scarier than all of a sudden your enemy catching on fire because your frog is the one that cast the fire spell. I think that's actually awesome, and I went back way too far, so soup time. Um, of course, let's talk about grease, baby. Uh, this only works if your DM isn't a narc because the real, the real rules text for grease says that it makes difficult terrain we all know that's lame we all know that's stupid if you're a dm just let them do what grease is exactly used for which is slipping and sliding baby 
Uh, you can get people to slip and slide around. This is hysterical if you could put this on hills. Um, we talked about this in the gelatinous cube video, but um, you can absolutely use grease and a gelatinous cube to acidify enemies and disintegrate them at a moment's notice. Um, you can use it to create kill zones. So, for example... Um, if you're facing lots of small opponents, or like if you're in like a military setting, you can use grease to funnel enemies into areas you want to funnel them into, uh, because they will naturally go around the areas that are more difficult to progress. The other thing that I have seen this used for a couple times, and I have used this a couple times as well as a GM or a DM, is you can use this to actually increase mobility. So for example, if you were trying to ramp something, why not put grease on the ramp, or like why not um, use it as a way to increase your own mobility. Uh, this works especially well when someone has like freedom of movement or something like that. I've let some of my PCs with like freedom of movement or haste um, use grease as a positive thing. Um, again, this really only works if your DM isn't a narc. If you're a DM and you're watching this, don't be a narc. Just let them use grease. Let them use it in the cool way. Uh, last but certainly not least, let's talk about floating disc. Uh, so floating disc is an interesting one because the text for floating disc reads that you can't have it uh, float over an open area, right? Which is stupid. It's a disc that floats. I don't understand. Part of the reason I don't love 5th edition so much is they changed a lot of the spells text, and I'm like, but that that's cool. Like, floating disc, like, moving it over an open chasm is cool. That's a great way to, like, you know, send supplies across an open chasm or solve problems, whatever. Um, but here's the cool part. Uh, so part of the rules text uh, says that it can go up stairs, and it can go up uneven material. So what you do is you find 500 pounds worth of material. You move the disc up the flight of stairs or at the edge of a roof. Uh, and then you dismiss the floating disc. And then 500 pounds of whatever comes crashing down on your enemies. Um, that is rules legal, technically. So uh, again, all of this I think is super cool. Uh, it's stupid that it can't go over pits, uh, fifth edition. What are you doing? But I love the idea of you just, uh, just Looney tunes it and literally dropping a freaking piano on like a bunch of unsuspecting bandits. I think that's incredible. That brings us to the end of this, uh, this week's episode of getting the most from low level PCs. I hope you have enjoyed it. Um, if you have the love in your heart, please give us a like, share, comment, subscribe. It really does help out. Um, I will eventually be adding all of this stuff to some playlists. So if you want to come back and rewatch, uh, so you get some ideas for your own campaigns, that'd be awesome. If you have any suggestions for stuff that you'd like me to cover for low level monsters or low level PCs, you can do it in the comment below. And again, um, I, so a lot of you clearly like what we're doing here. You might actually like the RPGs that I write and you can get them at our friends over at world of game design. That's right. You can literally go into the description below. You can click the button. You can get yourself a wonderful, beautiful mwah, chef's kiss RPG over at world of game design. Uh, and I think that'd be super cool, but until next time, I'm Kyle lot for desks and dorks. You guys have been awesome. You guys have been fantastic. Uh, appreciate you. Love you. Peace.